Many thanks for joining us. You are watching OBN Horn of Africa. This is Talk to OBN Show. As it is all known, Ethiopian government has been undertaking a law enforcement measure in Tigray Regional State, particularly on a rebel group TPLF clique. The operation has started uh, before some 20 days and the government has launched again a state of emergency in the north uh, to just uh, implement the law enforcement measure out there. Tigray Regional State is under under state of emergency for six months now onwards. Uh, Ambassador Redwan Hussein is spokesperson of the state of emergency task force. I joined him today. Thank you for joining me, Ambassador. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, can you exactly tell us the overall uh, procedure implementation? and practical situation out there in the operation? Um, I just mentioned uh, through your uh, introductory the um, law and order enforcement operation began uh, the last three weeks, um, 20 days ago. Um, so the, our national defense forces have been uh, gaining a swift um, advantage over the TPLF uh, uh, leadership. Uh, more and more cities uh, have been unfettered um, from the clique uh, and as, as our defense forces uh, move along, um, as you might have witnessed um, through your reporters also, the people have been uh, um, collaborating with our national defense forces. Uh, the defense forces actually have also been taken maximum care uh, not to inflict um, colossal damage uh, on the people and on the property of uh, the country. Um, so with, with, with minimum casualty with regards to the operation itself, uh, there have been casualties uh, first inflicted upon our national forces of uh, the Northern Command by the TPLF forces. Then again, um, as the world is, uh, has now been aware, um, there was a uh, Maikadra uh, massacre. Um, there are also other, other individuals uh, kept on being found um, dead and attacked uh, um, in a certain cities as our national forces move along. But with regards to the operation itself, with regards to the, the combating both the airstrike and uh, the, the ground force combating, then cities were spared from being damaged. Uh, by and large, people were also spared from inflicting um, wounds or, or on uh, death. So with a minimum, um, I guess it is unprecedented uh, with such a magnitude to liberate uh, um, a state as large as Tigray, also to liberate cities as many as uh, the, the Tigray cities that we um, all recall. There are more than a dozen. Uh, so there were people, there were soldiers, there were forces here. Um, to, to host them from all the cities with a minimum casualty and minimum damage to the property in cities, apart from those bridges destroyed, roads destroyed, and airport is uh, distracted uh, as it was witnessed in, in Aksum. Mm -hmm. So it was an operation uh, much more successful um, to the surprise uh, of uh, not only Ethiopians but also to the international community because as you might recall uh, our partners were um, making a call uh, for negotiation to sit down and talk. Uh, we were adamantly expressing um, Ethiopian government is um, a government of a sovereign country, um, so it cannot just sit down with every rebel uh, group who attacked the nation, who threatened the, the very existence of uh, Ethiopia, and then who committed treasonous act, attacking its own force. Um, so that kind of uh, negotiation would simply incentivize impunity, uh, and that would descend the country into ungovernability, and it would just um, put a negative precedent um, that, that any disgruntled element um, from any corner of the country ma ma might rush to acquire a missile uh, and also rockets and threaten the existence of its own nation. And if the government always compelled to sit down and talk, then there is no country to be governed. So that was our stand. Um, so to the, to, to, to the surprise of all international uh, forces, Within three weeks, um, by and large, Tigray is free. 
That doesn't mean um, they won't be sporadic shooting here and there within the bushes, within the village, and within some cities because we cannot control each and every neighborhood. Um, what we mean by Tigray is liberated is major cities, major neighborhoods, Uradas and Dons and Kabales, by and large are uh, actually free. And then um, the, the clique, which actually was running Tigray, based in Makale, um, has to run away. Uh, for the hideout is um, as far as 45 kilometers uh, away from Mekale and our government actually detected the whereabouts of the major force. Uh, some individuals m m might scatter here and there. So what remains is just to, um, to chase uh, individuals and groups uh, against two charges warrant is issued. Um, so that's, that's what remains. Otherwise, by and large, it was a successful um, law enforcement operation. Okay, great. On November 4, uh, TPLF did very uncompro um, I mean, uh, uncompromised act over the Northern Command, which is very atrocious and treasonous act, isn't it? Uh, yeah. we, 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 we know that even uh, the, the majority of Ethiopian nation and citizens know as TPLF is behind every, every, every tragedy in Ethiopia over the past three years. Uh, there was displacement, TPLF was there. There was another casualties, turmoil, unrest, resource vandalizing, you see? Uh, perpetrating civilians, killing, murdering, stuff like that, right? But they did, which is very cynical and which is very atrocious, killing their own military defense, which doesn't sound to hear even as a nation. With what intention did they, did they do that? Are they planning to regain the central power? Are they planning to take, I mean, uh, the leadership by hosting the current administration, which is led by Abiy Ahmed? Um, we need to connect the dots um, to deduce um, what was it up to. Um, the government has uh, intelligence, uh, adequate information uh, in many of the atrocities as the Premier was explaining to the Parliament the other day. Um, in the last two and a half years, there were about 113 violences, ethnic-based, uh, face-based, uh, etc. So the uh, government was uh, time and again saying there was a group, uh, a certain entity behind that um, atrocities and uh, violences, uh, both in terms of bankrolling, that means financing, training, giving um, political and moral and material support. The so government was actually um, pointing finger at, 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 at such an element, but again, it, it elected to, to remain calm, to remain magnanimous. Um, it was, uh, to the opinion of uh, the reformist government, uh, to give chance for people um, to repent uh, and also to denounce their bad acts and then to come on board and move forward. So government made it its option to give it a repeated chance. Uh, but otherwise, uh, as it was being said in the parliament, there were assassination attempts twice. There were the coup d'etat attempts twice and then there were 113 violences, uh, maiming, killing, uh, vandalizing. So all sorts of uh, difference based uh, phase, either phase or language or ethnicity based violences were disintegrating the country. Um, y you could say it was to disorientate it to disorientate the government, to destabilize the government, um, to not to let the government to focus on the fundamentals uh, of addressing the clarion call that uh, Ethiopian people were asking for uh, to undergo reform, to bring about more jobs, uh, to solidify the country, um, to address uh, issues of maladministration, to address issues of corruption and to address issues of nepotism. Uh, those were the, 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 the people um, chanting to, to be addressed and reformed. 
and the government was uh, actually ready and committed to address those issues. When those issues were adequately addressed, and then some people might not uh, be happy uh, as it was proven true. So destabilizing the, the government um, eventually would end in unseating the government by all means, either by eliminating its leader, and then the government would, would descend into chaos, or by orchestrating coup d'etat, and then you can seize the power in both aspects. So that was what the government believes in, and then all the dots uh, would actually um, indicate to that point. The last point, which uh, no country, no government, if it is functional, no country, if it is sovereign, that wouldn't allow is uh, for a certain militia or a special group or anybody for that matter to acquire armaments of the National Defense Force to turn against your National Defense Force and to attack it is reasonable enough. So no government, uh, no matter how magnanimous it wishes to be, um, that is a red line um, not to cross. And once you cross, there is no magnanimity on that. So that's what the government was trying to do, um, to go for operation, okay. to quell um, that kind of uh, treasonous uh, crime. Good. As you've said, uh, most of the provinces, hamlet, counties, uh, some towns, you see, uh, are liberated from the TPLF clique and junta. Mm -hmm. uh, except one high-profile uh, central committee member of TPLF, the rest uh, hide it themselves. We don't really know where they are. And the government is undertaking surveillance. Uh, could you tell us where they are? With the, as far as the, the reconnaissance um, information goes, and as far as the intelligence that the government has given the technology uh, advancement of technology that we have now, um, government believes uh, most of them retreated to um, a very famous um, cave, um, which used to be a headquarter uh, during the gorilla um, struggle. Um, it is specially named uh, Agra Salam. It is well equipped. Um, it is um, midway uh, of a cliff, um, a flatland, which suddenly falls and then you have a cliff, mm -hmm. and then um, under its beneath, you have an underground uh, uh, facility uh, which is well equipped, which can serve as a shelter, uh, which can serve as uh, um, um, basic uh, um, harbor uh, and abode uh, for quite as large uh, number of uh, people as possible. So uh, it is believed that it is there, um, but uh, I don't think everybody would go there because uh, um, no sane person would, would put it as, uh, all its eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it goes uh, without saying that not all of them mm -hmm. actually have gone there. So that is a major area where they can hide because it's a little bit safer um, unless you go on foot and by truck then you cannot physically attack it uh, by air. Um, so it, it is a likely place for to be used as a hideout. But I don't think everybody uh, goes there. So then we need to, the government may, I think, wish and then still doing to, uh, to search. Member of the Central Committee of TPLF, uh, Kere Ibrahim, surrendered uh, her hand to the federal government. What does that signify? It, it, it signifies uh, the end is uh, within reach and um, those who embrace the reality that there is no more um, to fight for and there is no more um, to run away uh, and then um, it's customary that people would embrace reality uh, and boldly face it um, so the likely scenario is to turn yourself um, to, to the government mm, and then um, wait for you uh, acquittal or uh, conviction as per uh, the evidence which could, which could be brought against you. So 
it's, it's a sane and a reasonable scenario once you, you, you see the end is already reached. And then now if you, if, if, if you reach at, at a dead end, then you don't have to uh, struggle with your, with your fate and reality. So I think this is, she accepted reality and we believe others might also follow suit and then it would be good for the people and for themselves. Okay, you've said uh, this uh, TPLF crew has sheltered in Hagra Salam, probably under a cave, maybe, and is well equipped with armament and arsenal. Uh, would we expect a guerrilla fighting? Um, many people, particularly the foreign uh, partners, who also might consider themselves as gurus uh, in East African issues, are suggesting that, but. If you, if you look at the reality, um, to wage a guerrilla war, a guerrilla fighting in St. Jose, you need to have, to have uh, a launching pad. You need to have a launching area where you can stay safe, and again, you can hit and run, and you can attack and defend. Uh, for that, you need to have basically either a dense, a remote, inaccessible forest, or a foreign land. Um, in Tigray, you have that cave and then it's already identified. Um, again, you don't have that inaccessible forest like Amazon um, or others, and there is no hideout, uh, enough shelter there. Uh, the other aspect is a foreign country, a foreign land. Um, Eritrea is not uh, Eritrea that we used to know. It is a friend. Sudan is not um, Sudan that we used to know. It is a foreign country. So. They don't have that foreign land which can harbor uh, such kind of uh, an element to wage atrocities against Ethiopia. Uh, and then Ethiopian government can also fend itself. The other aspect is you need to have the people, the larger populace, mm. who might subscribe for your cause mm. and willing to hide you mm. and willing to support you mm. and willing to die for. Mm. Now, the current Ethiopia, the current Tigray, is not the Ethiopia that we know some 50 years ago, mm. some 40 years ago. We don't have a collective, brutal leadership that anybody can either fight mm. or deliberately lays other fight and support behind. So Ethiopia has changed, technology has changed, the surrounding environment has changed. So to, to recourse to an insurgency or guerrilla fighting is simply far-fetched and then not only improbable, but it's also impossible. Good. Uh, their media, I mean TPLF, uh, TPLF's media, used to televise that uh, the central government or the federal government is undertaking uh, ethnic cleansing uh, operation. It's not uh, uh, a law enforcement measure. They've been uh, broadcasting this, right? What was the reaction of, uh, I mean, the, the people of Tigray uh, along with this operation? Uh. If, if the operation were um, in the border towns and cities, um, you might create that hysteria um, to let people panic and then stand together against the coming force. Now, city after city, town after town, um, had fallen into the hands of our defense forces, and finally, Merkel itself had fallen into our defense forces. And now people are coming out and saying that they were very much afraid because they were told to be afraid. And now they've come and see soldiers are protecting them, not attacking them, protects them from their own children, their own youngsters, um, which are scams in the society within the city that may turn against and rob them. So the people are telling to our defense forces, they are not afraid, uh, afraid of the defense force anymore, but they are af afraid of their own city dwellers uh, who might turn against and then rob them. So they are asking the defense forces to stay there and to protect them. So whatever was said, whatever we told, told to, the, to the people, okay, it's okay to be afraid of until you see and prove to yourself. Now the people have seen in every town and city, the, our defense forces did not attack the cities, did not attack the people. They were rather sharing their 
ration, like biscuits and water and wa wa the, the, yes. what you have. So people are still asking the, the, our soldiers to stay more in the city rather than um, to, to stand against them. Now the chemistry has changed. If there was any fear, now it is evaporated. Now as we go along, people still may realize that those soldiers were there to protect Tigray, through Tigray to protect our border, through our border to protect the entire Ethiopia. So they stayed there for like two decades. They were friends, they were families. That was the spirit which actually prevailed before the last three weeks. It turned uh, like the dust was raised. Um, things were uh, unpredictable um, after November 4th. And then now the calming down is setting in. And then uh, as we move along, because the interim government, interim administration of Tigray is now uh, undertaken um, talking to the people uh, and forming the new administration with all the Kabale, most of, not all, most of the Kabale and Warad administrators, the former ones, still they are allowed to continue. Elders are coming out, religious people are coming out. Now they are talking about not the past, but the future. So they are, they are not living with their hysteria, with their panic. Now they are talking about how to regain control of their, 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 their destiny, how to resume the daily life, like markets, business, schools, and health facilities, and how to fight against corruption and uh, petty crimes. Now people are regaining their hope and then coming together to move forward. So that has proven. So if they were um, made to be afraid, made to be frantic, now it has gone because they have proven for themselves. Yes, again, they have been uh, televising through their media that uh, President of Eritrea, Isaias Aforki, has cooperated in this operation. Does that sound again? One thing is obvious, and then uh, it was actually being uh, openly said. Uh, not openly said, it was, only, uh, it was also being praised for that, because when... Uh, the TPLF special forces and militia and also the former generals and um, soldiers and uh, commissioned uh, officers were turned against their own friends, the national defense forces, when they sent them stripped of their clothes. So the Eritrean government, one, they, it allowed them an army, okay, a defense force, an army of another country carrying its own arm, given the, the fallout that we had uh, before the last 20, I mean, during the last 20 years. And then that country allowed them to cross its border, and then it fed them, and then it gave them its clothes. It allowed them to come back again to Ethiopia. So it's, it's, it's a collaboration enough, and then it's something to be praised, because uh, a soldier which is attacked and chased out from its own country being ushered in, okay, being welcomed, being fed, being given clothes and food, and being allowed to come back again to defend itself is what you expect from a friendly country. And then it is also the result of uh, that reformist government, which is led by Abi. Um, had we been with our qualms and differences, had we stayed at odds with uh, Eritrea, we would have been in big, big trouble now. So the reformist government, the Abiy government, saved us. It, it, it brought a friend to Ethiopia. That friendship, that rapprochement, now saved the nation again. Mm -hmm. So it is okay if you praise that. And then it would be very much ungrateful if we just keep quiet um, without telling and, to the and public. And, and for this reason, they, they, they have been, uh, I mean, uh, firing rockets to the city of Asmara and uh, other places in Eritrea, right? Yes, and uh, and at uh, the same time, they I guess they thought uh, a thing going to change into another form. They plan to make it a kind of regional war. Yeah. And the presence of Al Sisi in South Sudan has got another connotation. They have been trying to make it a regional war, I guess. Yes, if you look at uh, the continuous uh, propaganda and pronouncements uh, by the TPLF leadership. Um, what they planned was 
before even the, the collaboration of the Eritrean government for our fleeing soldiers. Mm. It was a pre-planned, premeditated design um, to attack Ethiopian um, soldiers, Ethiopian Defense Force, to attack neighboring people and to attack Eritrea, then to bring everybody to the chaos, to the, to the conflict. One, um, you, you let an insurrection, an all-out civil war in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. You bring also neighboring countries and then you paint a regional conflict. Once it turns out to be a regional conflict, then other foreign elements might have uh, a disguise uh, reason to come and, and involve and try to mediate uh, for the negotiation. When you say r their, their attempt was to make a regional war, right? They, they tried to give, I mean, that, that form, right? Yeah, one, uh, one thing. Regional in this sense, yes. it's a kind of uh, horn region case. Exa or, exactly. Yes. And one thing, you attack Amara and then um, you, you instigate also destabilization in Romania because you attack Amara, uh, the Amara region may involve in the conflict mm -hmm. because you instigate uh, destabilization in Romania and Romania will come and involve in, 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 in such insurrection, then it appears that Ethiopia is at a full of civil war. So once Amara and Romia would involve in such a conflict with Tigra and among each other, then other regions uh, with, with, with less a stronger administration like we saw in Ben Shangul and we saw in other uh, areas. So then conflict is may erupt um, in everywhere in the country and that makes an all-out civil war. That also calls for and international mediators to come in the middle with our internal affairs. Mm -hmm. And then the government would also be forced to sit down and talk. That means that brings these elements for the table, um, through that table negotiation to the power. And then the government now, which is uh, leading Ethiopia, uh, they say may not be legitimate enough. So they will go for transitional government, mm -hmm. which brings them to power. The other aspect, when they attack uh, Eritrea, Eritrea may fire back. If Eritrea fires back, it becomes the Horn conflict. Yes. Once it is the Horn conflict, it goes beyond the boundaries of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Then it, it calls for other to engage. Yeah. others to engage, like the, the Western or other um, even African countries to come and engage, because it is not only Ethiopian case, regional case. So no, no one would be allowed to destabilize the region. Then others would come and then mediate on the issue. Through mediation, they can meddle easily. Let alone it, became re it would be regional, even with the Ethiopian case, you see the amount of pressure that um, many people with all their vested interest or with um, a sheer fear that Ethiopia may collapse, now people are forcing the government to sit down and negotiate. So if, if it spreads that way, then it becomes easier for people to push the government. Among others, when Abiy took office, he made uh, political parties I mean, contesting political parties who were in exile uh, to repatriate to Ethiopia. You see, those political parties, contesting political parties, were uh, out of a country due to, I mean, uh, TPLF, right? But these days, some of the parties, we can mention OLF, a wing from OLF, which is OLF Shani, uh, is showing affection with that of, uh, uh, to TPLF. You see, it's, it's a kind of paradox. How do you put that? Um, it's not paradox. <laughs> um, it's what the, one of the Chinese uh, president is uh, said to have put it. Um, it doesn't matter with, whether the cat is white or black, <laughs> so long as it catches the mice. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter with whether you, you, you partner with uh, a satan or an angel. <laughs> so long as it, it, it brings you to power mm. and it lets you stay in power. Mm. So in whatever fashion, whether killing the Prime Minister, whether orchestrating coup d'etat, whether bringing those who would purport to be federalist on power, so by all means, either to come to power and stay or to destabilize uh, with the mission, not to govern in a rational, a sound, Way whereby you can get the consent of all Ethiopians. Mm. So, 
by all means possible you have to stay to power mm. uh, that's what uh, the TPLA leadership was was trying to do mm. uh, because many people have been incarcerated <laughs> languished in prison <laughs> because they were affiliated with uh, OLA <laughs> and then uh, I mean the lion's share in calling the shots in bringing many people to to prison though the party as a party would would, would be, would be ac accountable for that so the government as entire government would be accountable for that then people were being incarcerated uh, in the name of is a terrorist or in the name of um, fundamentalist muslim uh, that kind of leveling uh, was not was not left only for those people is outside the government you could also be leveled if you stand against and so we used to do that mm. um, so uh, but at the center of it was this leadership and now, to flip mm. to the other side and mm. to bring um, oil of Shani, 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 Onak Shani mm. which is now maiming the, the, the people in, in the western part of Ethiopia mm. and also in the south, southern part of Ethiopia, mm. to bring that on board um, is immoral, but um, so long as uh, uh, the cat uh, catch the mice, there's them for them, doesn't matter whether it's black or, or white. I think they, they follow that, that, Good. that kind of Another analogy. question, uh, Ambassador. Uh, over the last, uh, I mean, 2.5 or 3 years, probably we are getting to score 3 years under this reform, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the TPLF clique, through their media, through, again, it can be social media or broadcast, they have been... Uh, mocking over this administration, particularly on Mr. I mean, uh, Prime Minister Abi Ahmed, they have been criticizing, the, I mean, disgracing, underrating this reform. Do they have that moral to say so? Uh, well, anybody is entitled to um, his or her opinion. Uh, the thing is, there were some good things. Uh, that were actually pursued by the government, like with moving away from that control freak uh, type of leadership that we used to have when we were together. And now the, the, the Abis government, Abi particularly himself, was pushing a little bit further um, to, to lax the environment, to broaden the political spectrum. Um, so releasing prisoners whichever crime, uh, particularly if it were political, uh, and bringing all those uh, political parties uh, and dissenters uh, from abroad, bringing all the citizens that he may come across uh, back to Ethiopia, and letting the political space. What actually was encouraging, because look, in times when we were control freak, we couldn't call anything because pressure was piling up, uh, not only in the public, but within the party itself, uh, dissatisfaction was rife. So many people were not happy with the way we handled the politics. When it comes to economy, of course, um, apparently, because the country w w used to be growing in a double digit or nine or seven, um, so it seemed okay. It was only few who knew that some anomaly uh, was coming because of uh, the death burden, because of the malfunction of projects, because of uh, the increasing corruption um, that was being manifested in the bigger projects. And then people began to, to, to be worried. But when it comes to democratization, when it comes to administration, uh, when it comes to politics, um, M many people, not, 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 not few people even were happy with the way we are handling. So we are quarreling with each other. We cannot continue like this. This scenario, this status quo cannot sustain. So something must be done. So that was uh, a call within the party. And there was a high pressure piling up uh, outside within the people. So then it resulted um, in a way that the status quo would never sustain. So a new, a new mode of uh, handling politics, a new mode of trying to handle the economy, 
a new, a new mode of trying to also address the administrative and legal issues uh, was the call of the day. Then Davi has to try somehow those ways. And then there is no way some, some, someone would go uh, elsewhere and then criticize him for that. But I'm not saying Abi, Abi is infallible. I'm not, say, I'm not saying he's uh, free from mistakes. Like anybody of us, even tomorrow, even um, the coming year, even the coming generation, if there is a government which is lied by people, by human, then you can make mistakes. Or even if you are correct, even if you are right, there is always somebody out there who may not agree with the way you handle issues. So if they had that genuine difference, it's okay. But when your difference is mingled with malicious intent to disgrace him, okay, to label him, and then finally to, to, to push him aside, and then for you to come in and take over, and then it's unbecoming. Another question. Uh, I mean, the reformist leader Abiy Ahmed has coined uh, has coined a prosperity party, right? Which embraces each and every nation in a country, each and every reg region of the country participant in the political spectrum of the country, right? In the case of TPLF, uh, it was uh, a coalition of uh, four major nations, the South, the Amhara, the Oromia, and that of uh, Tigray itself, right? But they, I mean, this rebel group criticized that as if Abiy's administration is going to say it a unitary government. This is another paradox again. Uh, can you elaborate it? Um, it's not paradox. Uh, but it's an apparent backpedaling and also disingenuous leveling. Why? Because I've been in, in the center of the party and I know there had been a number of calls uh, to unify the party, to let affiliated parties of the five regions to join EPRDF and then have a, a broader party. Uh, even that call was actually being made by the senior leadership from the TPLF. Uh, I remember in one of uh, our congress, uh, it was me who, who used to lead the EPRDF office. So it was me who organized that, that, that congress. So, so you himself uh, went out and then criticized us because we are uh, dragging our feet not to let this party come together. Uh, and before that, I know in a number of congresses, we used to decide that um, the council and the office or the executive committee has un to undergo study and to come up with a resolution as to how we can come together in letting affiliated parties to join EPRDF. So it was a clarion call and then it was long overdue. And then it was not actually being pushed by the affiliated parties like the, the Somali, the AFA, Ben Shangul, Gambela and Harari, but also within the TPLF but also within the, the ANDM, uh, senior leadership was pushing, look, we have to change our, our program, to adjust our program a little bit. Because when affiliated parties would come and join us, the revolutionary democracy strictly would not be followed. So we had to adjust somehow to the current reality. Because EPRDF itself had, had been adjusting itself uh, from the strict communism to a little bit of mixed one. And then after the, 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 the factional um, uh, splintered out and then with the new democratic developmental state paradigm uh, towards capitalism. So it, it is pragmatic to, to read your current reality and try to embrace it and then for that to adjust your program and manifesto and bylaws and you, your policies based on that program. So it's just being practical and pragmatic. It's, it, it was not just um, moving toward this unitary government. In Ethiopia, unitarism will never work, ever. That Ethiopia is gone. And so particularly them, they, can, they cannot accuse anybody of that. So they know it. So in Ethiopia, what, what, what is the plausible, the feasible, and the probable way is to embrace diversity, okay, as we are diverse, so to deny that diversity, we don't hold it up together. Okay, uh, Ambassador Redwan Hussein, I really appreciate 
for your precious time. I, I, I know that you are really tight with tasks because you are a spokesperson of this state of emergency task force. I mean, different international media give you a call for information because they need to n hear from the horse's mouth. I really appreciate you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. The pleasure was mine and happy to serve.